There's evidence that persons with disabilities have gravely encountered barriers while accessing sexual reproductive health rights and services. And there is no systematic research or evidence that can show the magnitude and the nature on which these persons have been highly impacted and affected, especially during this COVID-19 pandemic. The Uganda Bureau of Statistics census report from 2016 indicates that 12.4% of the Ugandan population is living with some form of disability. That means that approximately 4.5 million people are living with a disability in Uganda. In Uganda, the society and negative perceptions towards the lives of persons with disabilities living generally and united with people in communities, especially when they are accessing uh, services in line with sexual reproductive health, always affect their accessibility and their involvement in advocating for some of the services in the communities. Persons with disability remain one of the most neglected groups in the political sphere as well as the private sector. They are faced with a number of barriers economically, socially and politically that impact their physical, social, economic and intellectual development as well as their well-being. The experiences of young persons living with disabilities, specifically those with hearing impairment, amount to lack of contextual information on sexual and reproductive health rights alongside with the services relating to SRHR. This usually comes about when these young people go to service access points and there is a communication barrier between themselves and the health workers. Evidence has it that these young people uh, end up being victims of gender-based violence as well as unintended HIV transmission and also in accurate information and myth relating to COVID-19. It is important to involve sign language interpreters in the different advocacy programs, especially sexual reproductive health, as they help to bridge the communication gap among the deaf persons and they can easily access information. Women and girls with disabilities experience a combined disadvantage of disability and gender, such as gender-based violence, limited access to education opportunities, limited access to economic opportunities, low incomes and poverty. The target audience involved the youth, the policy makers and the media houses. For the youth, while we're using the young people with disabilities who are taking lead in the campaign, at the same time, we're using the young people who are going to share their stories and experiences, both in writing and using sign language as a means of communication. We all know that we are living in a digital generation where there has been a high increase of young people that are accessing information through digital means. And uh, Sign for Health using, uses the same approach. But most importantly, targeting young people uh, in an inclusive manner. And here, we are looking at also young people with disabilities, uh, in disabilities that also include uh, hearing impairments and others. These are young people that have been left out in terms of accessing information. And Sign, Sign for Health is coming into that space using a digital approach to avail that information and increase its access for young people with disabilities, uh, but also young people in general. So, what is the methodology of Sign for Health? Sign for Health uses uh, both audio and visual uh, tools to package and uh, share information. For example, we'll be designing short videos as well as graphics that uh, packages information on sexual productive health, HIV, COVID-19, GBV, and other health uh, issues that affect young people within their communities. We encourage you to take part in this campaign because it's going to be promoting the rights of these young persons, bringing them to the platforms, giving them the opportunities to come out and express themselves, to share their experiences, especially during this COVID-19, and speak up on the issues that affect them, given the fact that we have really shut them down for a very long time, and it's high time that we give them the podium and the platform to speak up. This can help in achieving universal health coverage and leaving no one behind. Mm -hmm.